Hey everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds. In today's video we're going to be hooking up an outlet. <coughs> Excuse me as I have a bit of a cold. Um, this will be your rough wiring obviously. And here's your outlet. And the first thing you're going to need is a little scrap piece of wire. So we're going to cut a piece off of that. So we need that for our tail. And then all you're going to do with that little scrap piece is you're going to pull these little pieces of wire out because we're going to be using them. Just set those down. The next thing I want to show you is how quickly and easy it is to strip the wire. Now generally all I do is I'll just take my little hook knife and I just put a little tear in the end of it. Once you got that tear, all you got to do is you grab it, pull it, and it strips right back. Again, grab it, pull it, and it strips right back. Pull your insulation back. So it's back at the back of the wire like so because you want to keep the wire fully stripped and you just shove your cutters in there cut that little bit off make sure not to cut your actual wire now we have our tails uh, now what you want to do is you want to strip those down so we just take and strip those and remember the, I'm working with 14 2 wire actually four or I'm sorry 12 gauge wire. Uh, 14 gauge wire is a lot easier to work with, but as in my previous video, I'm sure you've seen, uh, I'm trying to do 20 amp circuits and I want them to be more durable. So anyway, how they're going to want you, how your inspectors are going to want you to hook them up. Everything has to be bonded. <clears throat> and what I mean by that, it has to be continuous. So everything has to be done with a whip. Now, really, you don't need this much wire sticking out. I'm actually more than six inches. I could probably cut that back a little bit. But I always use a deep box when I'm doing my outlets. But anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to make take and make your whip. So you're going to take your three ground wires. We're going to take our wire nut. And we're going to twist them together. Now, this is probably kind of a boring video. <laughs> But some people I know don't know a lot of the things I'm going to show you. Uh, and that's the whole point of making these videos is to help people learn things. Anyway, once you get it good and tight, I usually like to turn it until I see the wire starting to pull on itself. And I give everything a little tug to make sure it's in there good. So now we have our little whip for our ground. And because you have to hook this ground to your outlet, what I always do is I take these little strippers here. I just grab the end of the wire. I'm hoping this is in the video uh, camera scene anyway. Uh, I just grab that though, and then I just twist and uh, turn it so I get a little loop on it. Now the reason I do that <clears throat> is now I can take my outlet. We can, once I get it up in there, slide it in and hang it on. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Put it in there, and then you just tighten her down. And actually, I'm doing that wrong. You want to make sure when you're doing it, now that I've got it stuck in there, that should be turned the other way. The reason that I'm saying that is because you want the hook to go with the tightening. So with this particular situation, if I can get it back on now, as I'm turning the wire to tighten it, you want it to pull it under. You don't want it to be in a point where when you're tightening, it'll push it out. So you always wrap it with the direction of tightening, which would be clockwise on your screw. Something else I want to point out, at least all outlets I've ever seen are color coded. Looking at the front of the outlet, <clears throat> you should see that you have a small slot and a large slot. Now this is a 20 amp outlet, so you have that little T slot. The large slot is always your neutral side. The small slot is always your hard, uh, power side. And then the little circle piece is your ground portion. Now, on the back of the outlet, if you don't know that anyway, your, your bolts are typically color-coded, or your screws, I should say. And as you can see here, your neutral is, should always be silver, and your hot should always be copper or gold in color, or brass, or whatever you want to call it. But <coughs> again, <clears throat> they're always color-coded. But again, you have to make these whips, and the reason I'm saying that is because your inspector is going to want to see a continuous circuit. 
but we're going to take out white wire strip that back a little bit and to make it continuous is why we're doing this little uh pigtails is what they call it now we're going to take our white wires and pigtail them together if i can get them to stay together anyway And then we're going to do the same thing with the black after we get the white done. And again, this is number 12 wire, so it is a pain to work with. And again, now we're going to do the same thing we just did with the neutrals with the black. We're going to take our wire, put them in there, twist them together. And give us our other, our last pigtail, which is our hot. That's nice and tight. I personally, there we go. I say that ground didn't feel good and tight to me. Now that we do that, what I kind of usually do is tuck some of that wire in there. Because it is a long amount of wire. And that is why I generally always use a deep box. And being that it's new construction, why not use a deep box? These particular boxes I use, uh, these I think are like $1.20 a piece. And then what you do is you screw them to the front. I'll even show you what I mean here. This is a standard box. Uh, personally, I generally won't use these. The only reason I have them is they were leftovers from a job I did from someone else. And this is what they requested that I use. Typically, these are the boxes that I use, and they're only like 60 cents a box. Or again, like I said, because this has the little tail, which is what you use to screw to the 2x4 as opposed to nailing it into the 2x4. Um, these are like a buck 20 a piece, and like I said, 60 cents a piece. They both work the same. They're both deep. Actually, I think these are even deeper than they are. Uh, and like I said, I prefer these, uh, but again, I have a bunch of these and why go buy stuff if I don't need to. <laughs> but anyway, back to our hooking it up. Again, this is uh, the neutral side. The neutral is going to be silver in color. So we're going to slide that into there. We're going to tighten that down just like so. That's nice and tight. We're going to flip that around. We're going to put our hot in there. Tighten that down. Just like so. And now everything's hooked up. We got to tuck it into the box. Something else I want to point out and talk about uh, <clears throat> since I have this sitting here. A lot of people don't know it. You'll see this little jumper here. It's on the side of the outlet and it's connecting this to this. What that does is that gives the top half of this outlet power to the bottom half of this outlet. Now, a little unknown secret to maybe some people is you can grab that with a pair of needle nose. I'm not going to do it because I want this to stay the way it is. And you can make each one of these outlets two different circuits. So if you grab that with needle nose, you just wiggle it back and forth like two or three times. That'll pop out. That separates the outlet from the top to the bottom. And then you can have one circuit on the top and you can have one circuit on the bottom. Uh, I don't recommend, well, I shouldn't say that. If you, if you have a need for doing it, absolutely do it. Uh, personally, I don't do it. I don't ever really need to do it. I just run extra outlets when I'm doing my jobs and that solves any problems you have. But there are instances when you might need more power in one specific location and that's when you would need that. Um, again, it's not something that's commonly done, but it is something that you can do. Now, the last thing I do here is once I get it all up in position, I just take my drill we screw the screws in I don't recommend running them all the way in with your drill because you will strip it out it is just plastic that you're drilling into what I always do is I get it as close as possible with the drill and then I finish screwing it in with that now something else that a lot of people might may or may not know is an outlet comes with these four little eyes here they're actually washers um, and those break off very easy and those can be used to be put behind the screw if you have to bring it out and shim it out to make it even with your drywall. 
Uh, typically, I always leave the eyes on, and then I buy separate washers myself. But everybody has their own opinion. But that is what those come that way for, is if you need them, you can pop it off, and you can use it as a shim on the back of the, uh, the outlet. Anyway, that's a real quick, easy way on how to hook up your outlets and stick them in the wall. So, as always, I thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below, and we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.